I don't feel that way anymore. I changed my mindset. I changed a lot of things about my lifestyle and I am just deliberately living. By deliberate living, I mean I am doing what my gut is telling me to do versus what my brain is telling me to do. So my plan is to go through, I already know what I want, how I want this to go because I started in the very beginning and I'm going all the way up until she talks about her journey being on YouTube. She just did it like a month ago. She released this video where she's like, hey, like I, I've been a full-time creator for like a year now and this is my experience. Like that video is kind of where I want the end point to be uh, because now like, Kelly's on an, in a new it's a new chapter you can feel it with her channel like it's just not the same and I've always appreciated kind of the different stages of Kelly stamps and I feel like in the beginning she was her most I feel like she was her most self like she didn't really worry too much about the dangers of being this on the rise creator and what that comes with so like you just saw her for who she really was in the very beginning. And she's always still, she's still herself, but I think at the beginning when you're just starting out and there, it's not um, so calculative in terms of like how you wanna do things, how you, you kind of just like, it's raw. Like it's just raw, 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 raw. That's all I can really think about or how I can phrase this. And then as she, like I would say from, 10k to 150 kelly was one way and then from 150 to like 350 kelly was another way and then from 350 to 650,000 subscribers she was another way and that's her right now and each each stage of kelly as she became this creator that drew in so many people so many different types of people that had this common thread which was kelly um you know she obviously you have to cater to who you are at that time and you can't be stuck on who you used to be because I used to like her with back in the day right but if you still rock with Kelly like you should rock with Kelly through all her phases and all her seasons kind of thing but obviously it makes sense if you can no longer I guess relate to the creator that you used to be able to relate to then you know what's the point but also I was watching Jackie Ina, her video about black creators not being relatable anymore. And what's more important, relatability or authenticity? Like someone you, you can continue to relate to because they're within your tax bracket and they kind of, they do the same thing you do or someone who's consistently real. And as you know, the things around them change, they are, they still keep it 100. And I think it's, it's not fair to expect someone who used to make let's say $1,500 a month from YouTube because she decided to speak to a camera and she just, she is now earning 60,000 plus a month from sponsorships um, and AdSense revenue to continue to be the same person. Like, it's just not realistic. It's not. Like the thing about that video was like, when I was watching her, cause I don't make 60,000 a month. I don't know what kind of person I would be if I was making that. I mean, obviously I feel like I'd still be the same person, but I'd be a lot more comfortable in terms of like less worrying, less stress, um, more happiness. Like that, that to me is how I feel like I would go. But you just never know. Like once you start making more money, it's like there tends to be more things that you have to handle, right? More things pop up. Like where'd that come from all of a sudden? But what got me was in that video, Kelly, the recent video right now of vlog NYC vlog six, she talks about how it makes me feel comfortable. I can't speak. We had a little bit of wine. <laughs> it makes me feel comfortable because I know that if the internet were to go away tomorrow, there's enough savings for a backup plan. I can transition to the next platform. So I guess I'm just in my overthinking hours. I've been doing this for quite some time now. And there are a lot of ups and downs on YouTube. I've been on an up for a long time, but now my channel is kind of just chilling out. It's growing at what I would consider to be a normal rate, like 1,000 subscribers a month. Before it was like 12,000 a month. You know, I was in a growth spurt. So I'm thinking very practically, like if I were to become irrelevant, ah, tomorrow, 
it's fine because I live in Texas. I can survive. I can literally stop working right now if I wanted to and live forever, not forever, but you know, for at least 15 years with savings. Does this rambling make any sense? I am constantly wondering if I am living in the moment enough or being too comfortable. Let me know in the comments if you understand. Let me know. Let me know what you're thinking. What I'm describing is FOMO. I'm doing the right, ah! my God, no. I knocked them all over. I'm still gonna eat it. I don't care what it looks like. I'm worried that I don't live in the moment enough, but I do. I live in the moment every single day on my channel. I get up, I, it is all 100% honest. I will choose to randomly go to a restaurant by myself. I will travel places alone. Like I decided to come here for fun and for an investment in my happiness because I was able to just say, hey, I'm gonna fly first class to New York, get a hotel on Hotwire, which wasn't that much money because it was Hotwire, see some friends, meet some new people, have fun, and go back to where nothing ever happens. You always have to think, what does the gut say and what does your heart say? I'm talking to myself right now, people are looking at me. This just feels so good to have this random train of thought on a really brisk, cool night here in Manhattan. Does any of this make sense? I hope it does. Please leave comments below if you understand what I'm saying. As in, do you feel like you are playing it safe because you're trying to protect yourself from getting hurt, whether it's financially in my case, I don't wanna be here because I'm so scared of, you know, my channel and stuff going away overnight and getting too used to living alone, being, you know, fancy. Or are you actually protecting yourself because you know what's best for you? That's the kind of fine line I'm trying to figure out right now because I know what's best for me, but whenever I come here and meet everyone and talk to them, they're like, you're not doing what's best for your channel because you're hiding in, you know, bumfuck nowhere. But I really enjoy it. I really do. Hmm. Yeah, like she acknowledges that she's not, she's not attracting the same numbers of subscribers she used to, right? Which I loved. I love people who are very aware and understand, like, they, they don't lie to themselves about reality and you, the numbers don't lie. Like she understands this. And also she's like, okay, well, if I lose YouTube and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, girl, you have close to three quarters of a million followers. Like, I think you're gonna be good, but you could lose it all tomorrow. Like in my head, I'm like, you're set, you're good, but it's all relative, right? Cause I'm comparing 60K to 60k for her to what I make now and it's like obviously like I'm gonna think 60k is like the magic number but in my head I'm like people make 70k a year and like they have to deal with that she's making close to 70 a month 70k a month and she's thinking that like like I could lose it all tomorrow what would I do now like what's next and I'm like well wow I don't think Kelly has a scarcity mindset. I think she has an abundant mindset, but she's just very realistic and she doesn't lie to herself about the numbers because all throughout her channel, if you go through, if you go through it, like she will pour water in a wine glass. She manif she was talking about manifestation. She's talking about like taking yourself out, putting yourself in positions and places and environments around people that you want to be like. I was a little baffled and confused, but also like, turned on and excited in the sense that like we're all so different and everyone's financial goals are so different and so but for her it's like we might need to we might need to pivot and re-strategize and figure out what's next like I'm waiting for her to drop the merch because I think when she drops her merch she'll surprise herself and she'll make a lot more money than um what she's making now um but it's nice to see her dabble into like a jewelry line. So that's what she's done. She partnered up with um, a company and she dropped some jewelry. She has a jewelry line out and some phone cases. But I think most people have been waiting for the Stampede University merchandise. So when she's ready for that, that's going to be interesting. And yeah, like Kelly could do like a podcast. I think a lot of people would listen to that. Like there's so many things that she could venture into now post YouTube and she doesn't have to just stay in the YouTube space, especially as with the amount of money she's pulling in, the views she's pulling in, the amount of people that still consistently follow her. I feel like people, once they subscribe, they kind of forget about it. They don't usually unsubscribe after you hit a certain number. 
Um, like, it's like, okay, I lost one, great, but I still have all these people, okay. But yeah, so those are my thoughts right now about Kelly stamps. And uh, it's exciting, it's fun. I hope this video is not bad because of the sun, but oh well.